In this uh, video, I'm going to be talking about compositions of transformations. And just like any other thing we've done in this class, a composition means a, a combination of multiple things, like composition whenever we did with composite volume, we meant like cones and cylinders and stuff put all together and find the, the total volume. We're going to do lots of transformations, and we're going to do those transformations in such a way that we can do like maybe a rotation, then a reflection, right, and put that stuff together into one long process. So that's what this video is going to talk about. Before we get going, let's talk about the vocabulary. Remember that we talk about reflections. That means we're going to flip something over. A translation is a fancy word for a slide. We're going to slide an object. Rotation means we're going to pivot an object. We're going to turn it around a pivot point. And dilation means we're going to make that thing either bigger or smaller, depending on the scale factor. And if we do a negative, we could really get involved because uh, negative, we're, we're doing bigger, or smaller, and we're doing rotations at the same time. So lots of examples in this video. Let's get going. First of all, a composite transformation, a composition transformation, is one transformation followed by the other. So you'll see things like this, little Roman numerals, and that tells you the order that we go. In order to get from shape one to shape two, it looks like I slid it upwards, so that's a translation. And in order from get to two, from two to three, it looks like I reflected it. In fact, I reflected it across the y-axis. We we're going to go ahead and write that in because you guys will be expected to use the proper vocabulary whenever you're doing this. So it's a reflection across the y-axis. We could even find the translation. It looks like it went upward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points, right? So that's how we've been writing things in our class so far, right? A translation along the vector 0, 7, and then a reflection across the y-axis. So that's what we're doing. That would be a composition transformation. Pretty straightforward, right? Lots of examples. Here we go. Tell what's going on in these. Ready? How did we get from 1 to 2? Well, it looks like we, uh, we started here and we went left 1, 2 units, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a half units. I'm glad those aren't on the axis. That'd make that too easy, right? So from 1 to 2, I translated along the vector negative 2, 8.5. To get from 2 to 3, well, that looks an awful lot like maybe it rotated around 0, 0, right? How far did it rotate? 90 degrees would be over here. That looks like 180 degree rotation to me. If you wanted to, you could take some patty paper and trace it out and figure it out with a protractor, but uh, I'll tell you right now, that's 180 degree rotation. Also notice we could have gone 180 degrees this way and it would be the same thing, right? So we're going to say rotate 180 degrees counterclockwise around the pivot point zero, 00. If you put clockwise here in this location down at the bottom, that would be fine because it gives you the same thing. Let's do the same thing here. How did I get from 1 to 2? I didn't change the shape at all, right, as far as the size. We'll get to that in just a second. But to get from 1 to 2, it looks like I took it and I folded it over. I flipped it over and flipped. The word for that is reflection. So 1 to 2, what we did is we reflected across the y-axis. And then to get from shape 2 to shape 3, we took it and we shrunk it. Hmm. Well... This is kind of an interesting one because if I look at the points here, I notice that the top left corner is, is 1, negative 1 in both cases. So that means the center dilation is not the origin. See, that would have shrunk. That would have been, been pulled in for the smaller shape. So it looks like maybe the center dilation is actually right here. Everything is expanding from this point. In other words, if I took a ruler and I traced, here's an easy way to figure it out, if I trace the corresponding points back from here, and, well, huh. turns out those three don't meet up in the same location. So you know what? See how I traced these back? I was trying to figure out where they all met up. Uh, that actually tells me that's not, that's not a good problem. That's not a transformation. So, um, so 
not a good problem here. Let's go ahead and skip that one for now. We are going to say that that was dilated around this point, but those points should have traced back all to this location here. So this, this actually needs to be a little bit longer, I guess, and down here, because it should have gone along the lines of, uh, really, my shape should have looked like this instead. But hey, you know what? Uh, that's what we get for doing this stuff on Microsoft Word, trying to draw pictures like this. Okay, that was a dilation. All right, let's go on. Next example. Forget it. Here we go. In the coordinate plane, triangle RST has vertices at R is 1, 2. S is at 1, 4. And T is at negative 3, 4. We're going to rotate this, then, this triangle, 90 degrees about the origin. Let's assume they mean clockwise there because they haven't stated. Let's rotate it 90 degrees around the origin, and then let's reflect it across the y-axis. So here's what I would like you to do if this is the end of course exam. I'd like you to go ahead and use patty paper, and we're going to do it just like we did in class. Okay, so I've got my triangle here with R, S, and T. And here's the origin, and I'm going to draw a plus sign on the origin, right? I'm going to rotate this until my patty paper, so wait, I guess I'll show it to you. That's what I've got on my patty paper, on my tracing paper. I'm going to go 90 degrees clockwise, which means I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to rotate it until my axes line up again. There's a 90 degree rotation. So before I get any further, here I go. This is where location of T is now. Here's the location of S. And here's the location of R. I'm going to draw those hard enough that I hope they show up. They did. That's fantastic. So this is shape one. Sorry about being left-handed here, right? Covering up all my work. Here's shape two. Okay? So I'm going to put a little Roman numeral two here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect it across the y-axis. Well, that's easy. Here's the y-axis, so I'm just going to mirror everything. I'm going to take this shape, basically. I'm going to flip it over so it looks this way, right? In other words, I'm going to say S was two units to the right, so now it's going to be two units to the left. R is two more units out, and T is going to be directly above it, so it's going to look like this. So my final drawing is going to look something along the lines of this, with S being this point, R, and T. So we're going to take it slow. We're going to go one step at a time, right, in order to draw these things. Um, okay. Let's do this one just because it has something new here. We're going to reflect across a slanted line, which we haven't done yet. PQR, P is here at 1, negative 1. Q is at 4, negative 1. And R is at 3, 1. So here's my original shape. I'm going to take this and reflect it across the x-axis. That's this one here. Well, that's interesting. Uh, so it turns out now P is going to be one above, Q is going to be one above, and R is going to be one below. So these shapes are going to overlap each other, and that's fine. Kind of wishing I would have drawn my Roman numeral one in a different spot now, but uh, it's fine. We'll get over it, right? So here's shape two now. However, we can do that. Boy, that's awful, isn't it? How messy is that? Okay. So we have this flipped upside down triangle. Now we're going to reflect it across the line y equals x. And there are shortcuts, and if you go online, I'm sure you can go find some shortcuts for what you're supposed to do for this in order to manipulate the x and y coordinates. But because we're just using patty paper, here's all I want you to do. Okay. I want you to go like this. I want you to use patty paper, place it over the top, and we're going to redraw not only the line okay, that we want to use as our reflection, but we're going to redraw the points. So this is my new R, this is my new Q, and this was my new uh, P. Okay. Now I'm going to take that patty paper, so here's what I have drawn. Okay, Ignore the other stuff around it, right? That's what I've got drawn right now, the outline of the triangle. And when we reflect it, we just want to flip the patty paper over. 
and we're going to go like this. And so now I can see that the new Q is going to be right here, the new R is going to be right here, and the P is still on the line. All right? So hopefully that shows up, and it did. Fantastic. And we have a shape. Looks kind of like a bow tie when we're done. Okay, this is the new R, this is the new P, and this is the new, um, whoop, I messed that up. This is the P down here. This is the Q. So there's our third shape in the series. I've got a couple more examples, but you know what? This video is already 10 minutes long, and seriously, I, I think you guys will be fine with this. It's just a matter of just going step by step and doing the, uh, the problem that you need to do one step at a time, okay? Um, yep, nothing along here, nothing on here. You guys will be fine, All right? Oh, no, let's do this one. One more. EOC example, and then I'm shutting up, okay? The point negative 7, 4 is reflected over the line x equals negative 3. Then the resulting point is reflected over the line y equals x. Where is this point located after both reflections? Okay. Well, first of all, you have to know which of these lines is the x equals negative 3 line. Here's the only one that has every x coordinate of negative 3. That would be this line right here. Right? Vertical lines have x equals. So what it's saying is if I drew this line, well, you know, you don't even need patty paper. Look. If this is a line of reflection, it's one, two, three, four units away. So now it's going to be in one, two, three, four units to the right. So here's after the first reflection. Okay. The resulting point, this one, is reflected over the line y equals x. Well, here's what I know is if I drew a line that was perpendicular, okay, and I'm just going to ballpark it here because this is a multiple choice question, but it looks like it's going to be somewhere along this line, doesn't it? Doesn't that look like about a 90 degree angle? And it looks like it goes about a box and a half or so, so go another box and a half. You know, that looks pretty close, doesn't it, to where it should be? Let's go find the point that has a location. This is where we're interested in finding. Okay, what's the location? Uh, one, two, three, four, one or so. Oh, look at that. There's only one that's even to the right, four units, right? Negative 10, negative 7 is all the way down here. One, four is up here after the first reflection, but you forgot to do the second reflection. And 4, negative 7 is way down here, okay? So, makes it pretty simple. Whenever you do these EOC problems, they try to be, get it. So if you have any clue what you're doing, there's going to be one obvious answer. This is a perfect example of that, kind of like the ACT. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we got composites done. So we got lines of symmetry left, and that is it. We're done for the